Hello YouTube, how are you? Good day. Getting back into the swing of things. So, I have had this um, message that I've wanted to kind of talk about for a while. I think I'm going to start on... I'm going to start on... Uh, hold on here. So, I have constantly talked about, um, in the course of things key elements for gang stalking to work. The first thing that I have talked about is obviously it does not work without the spell work. If there is no spell work, it's not as effective. It definitely, you are going to be your normal self. Excuse me, people around you are not gonna be able to be affected or, excuse me, manipulated past their common sense. I'm not gonna say intuition common sense because if you are a bird somebody's going to tell somebody that you're a plane and they're going to believe that while looking at you being a bird hell you're going to be a crocodile and somebody's going to tell you someone you're a plane and they're going to be like well why is it in the water and you'll be like i don't know the plane can swim and it has a tail you know and they're going to believe it so it's people believing things past their common sense that is spell work okay i think when people come back to their common sense and they come back to themselves they're incredibly embarrassed of themselves and they feel they feel less than intelligent at having believed that but that's where spell work comes in and uh you know hopefully anybody watching this feels better about that um, because you're going to think like everybody around you is stupid, <laughs> for lack of better words, you are. You're going to just wonder what is going on and what is happening. Um, past the spell work, fear and anxiety, and those are feelings that are going to be projected. Um, but also the uh, gang stalking helps with the fear and the anxiety. So feelings of always being sabotaged, always being watched, always being monitored, and then adding to that, um, you know, anxiety and worrying about multiple things, being overworked, being stressed, all these kinds of things. Um, yeah, you need fear and anxiety for gang stalking to work. The third thing that I've talked about in regards to this is soul ties and bindings. Once you are energetically binded, you have to be in this situation. This situation is going to persist no matter what happens. You can't escape from it. You can't run from it. Things are going to energetically happen because people are going to be energetically attached to you. And so you will find if you happen to, and it is possible to escape the soul binding, once you escape the soul binding, they're going to try to rebind to you like possibly every single day, um, if not multiple times a day, because that is what they need to enter your energy and to affect everything, to project and inject their dirty karma and energy into your energy and kind of steal your energy for them. Um, they need access to your dwelling in order to get uh, items that belong to you so that they can use it to work on and to also send it overseas and, and things like that. And then they also need access to you as a person so that you need a handler, someone who can you know directly influence your actions, they can influence the experiences that you're having, they can have access to your information, they know what you're working for it on to stop it and um you know they can get confirmation of whether or not the things that they're doing to you are actually working and uh also did i say to get information oh and also to help create bad memories for you because people know that you're a good person and a kind person and they've said that you're not and so in order to turn you into something that you're not they truly need to do things like disrupting your character creating bad memories making you bitter making you upset and making you a lower vibrational uh, version of yourself so 
thus far what is that six things uh five things um sorry that's one two three four five yeah five things and the last thing i'm gonna add is they need your reactions if you are not reacting to things that are happening they need your reactions so today that's what i'm gonna talk about is their reactions Ah, let us get into it. I'm going to do my best for this to make sense as possible. I hope it helps someone. So, I'm going to call this video from strength to strategy. When you are first encountering this situation, you need a lot of strength to go through it. You need a lot of strength to keep going. You need a lot of strength to endure. If you do a full year here the right way, meaning that you're not resisting, um, not that you're not resisting, sorry, but you're not acquiescing, you're not bending to the will of anyone else. If you do things that way, you're not letting this thing to kick you out of your life essentially if you operate like that it is after the, the first year it is your patience is going to run thin with it it is only natural this is why i constantly say that gang stalking is an ascension that gang stalking is self-mastery because you have to do things that are not necessarily natural so they're not natural at all so if someone continuously attacks you and hurts you you a normal human reaction is to hate that person is to not like that person is to even want to retaliate to that behavior the ascended way of dealing with this is to ignore and to forgive these are not necessarily natural things to do. And so that means you self-master. Not having a physical reaction, but having an emotional reaction is still having a reaction to it. Completely normal, but there is still a reaction. Not having either an emotional or physical reaction to things that are sent to you to upset you and disturb your peace, lower your vibration, frustrate you, this is where the learning is. I would like you to consider the possibility that what God has done is pulled someone out of their life, out of whatever they were doing, in order to train you into the person that you have to be to continue on with your life journey so if your case is stagnated meaning that someone cannot leave bothering you they cannot leave this file they cannot leave this they are binded to the situation of harassing you this person cannot take care of themselves in any way shape or form because they are binded to your growth and development and what i mean by that is you might have a chief gang stalker that probably can't sleep can't eat can't relax can't rest can't grow can't move on can't find new income cannot do anything but remain committed to your growth and development and so what happens is it's almost like you're working on a curriculum and it takes you through step by step on the things that you need to learn to become the best version of yourself so you have a full-time teacher I've said before that everyone is of service everyone and everything is of service to the universe whether or not they know it whether or not they like it we always say demons are of service to the Most High Satan is of service to the most high the people doing bad things are of service as well and so when you look at your situation with people gang stalking you and people harassing you and people monitoring you and people stalking you when you look at your situation you have to try to 
reframe this situation into feeling like you must master everything that comes your way. You must learn every trick. You must learn every um, deceptive practice. You must master yourself and your responses. You must develop tools and skills to bring you back to the right uh, vibration. You must learn how to cleanse yourself and your energy. This is not an easy cycle and it is not short. When it is framed as an attack on you, from that perspective, which is the narrative that is constantly being pushed, when it is framed that way and when you believe it that way and when you accept it to be that way, it is a very frustrating thing because you've placed yourself as a victim. When you bring yourself to a place where you accept it as self-growth and self-mastery, from that place you can challenge yourself, you can learn, you can grow, and you can continue to develop yourself. And this is where I would like to encourage you to be. I do not want to continue speaking about this as if it is just an attack on you. Welcome to your ascension. Welcome to you surviving, tolerating, then becoming accustomed to, then meeting the challenges head on, then finding constant solutions, then ascending out. This is the way through, this is the path through. There is no other way but to master yourself and ascend. This is not a cycle that you want to remain stuck in because you cannot grow. But the way you get stuck in this cycle is by not growing, is by not healing, is by not becoming a better version of yourself. So when you are simply tolerating this situation, you know what, that was actually a good flow of things. Let me just make a little bit of a note on that. I want to So I'm going to make a little, a little scale and I'll post that as well. When you are not reacting or sorry, when you are still reacting, still feeling, still taking this as an attack, these reactions, these emotional responses require energy because now you're feeling something, you're feeling rage, you're feeling retaliation, that you want to retaliate, you're feeling that you want vengeance, you're feeling upset, annoyed, you're asking God, when is it going to be done, etc., etc. And trying to con contain your, constrain yourself, you're, that tug of war you feel with yourself, you're fighting with yourself where it's like an internal push out and then you're kind of holding yourself back, that push and pull feeling like kind of fighting against yourself takes a lot of energy so as people try to get under your skin and as they laugh and as they look for all these reactions to try to make you feel down on yourself as all of that happens it's still taking a lot of energy and you want to always be careful with where you expend energy so instead of strategizing and instead of working with the circumstances to transcend them, working with the circumstances you have to find a solution, you are fighting against yourself not to have a poor reaction. If you are in this phase, it is still just a phase you have to go through because you have to learn through it. You're not going to automatically wake up one day and already be able to have no reaction to chaos. It takes an extended period of time in a chaotic situation for you to not have a reaction. It takes an extended period of time in chaotic situations to learn the use, to learn how to not have reactions. The first time you experience not having a reaction to things occurring around you, it is going to be the most beautiful thing you ever 
feel experience in this process well I don't know there's more to come I'm sure you know getting justice is gonna be exhilarating but you feeling having no reactions for the first time is gonna make you realize that had you known this the whole every single lesson you graduate makes you feel like had I even known it could be this easy I would not have been needing so much so let me give you an example <clears throat> i was essentially attacked day and night spiritually so a lot of energy was created um in my home energy was being sent to my home 24 7 i had to literally have sage burning 24 7 um and it angered me now I am never angry at God because I understand exactly what's going on here. People were astral projecting into my home willy-nilly all the time and God allowed it to happen. Now, as it was going on, it was incredibly frustrating, but I still did the things that I was supposed to do and continued on with my routines, prayer, meditation, whatever it is that I had to do. Things were difficult, but at least things were getting done. And going through that period of time you know i hadn't yet gone through the process of th so that taught me a lot first of all that taught me a lot about routines of cleansing that taught me a lot about like endurance and strength through spiritual attacks being able to be under a perpetual spiritual attack 24 hours a day um that taught me a lot about um you know protecting myself like there were a lot of lessons in that little phase right there and so i came out of it only after not when i needed the most not when it was the most trying but i came out of it and it it i ascended out of it when i no longer cared it didn't make a difference to me i knew how to clean i knew how to keep myself safe i knew what i wanted to do that was the period of no reaction where it was like i got used to it like oh okay well i'm waking up today and i'm being attacked around the clock oh well i'm eating today and i'm being attacked around the clock you know when someone projects into your space and you literally just look at them and just continue about your day then you're past the point of reaction when energy comes your way and you just literally like the sage and like clean it off or whatever tool you're using and clean it off then you are past the point of, re of reaction and you know you haven't come to that point of being past the point of reaction because you necessarily decided it's because you were kept in the fire so long and it was working for a period of time to frustrate you and you know do what it was intended to do and then you found that that feeling wasn't a good feeling that wasn't a vibration that you enjoyed and so you had to find yourself back to a place of a vibration that you enjoyed or at least a vibration that was easy to be in and that is a place of no reaction and if you can transcend from a place of no reaction to experiencing joy in the middle of it then really you have you know you've you've hit the mark you've aced <laughs> that's a level four that's like you know that's the honor roll level so that's where we want to be we want to get to a place where we can experience joy under attack and that is a place that is going to make you feel like it doesn't matter if this happens ever again you're prepared to deal with things like this. You're prepared to know the world is like this. So the next time it happens, you're like, oh, okay, it's not shocking. It's not gonna destabilize you. It's not even gonna stop you at all. So gods, the gods, deem that you need to know this upfront, perhaps because there's gonna be a lot going on. So, you know, it is what it is. You gotta be able to learn to deal with things like that now the place of no reaction is a place where you use very little energy in dealing with situations that are combating you situations of sabotage deliberate sabotage 
it is using your energy and putting it towards solutions instead of reacting, being frustrated, and lowering your vibration. So this is where you wanna be. The place of no reaction is the place where you can maintain your vibration in less than ideal situations. This is a place where you do not allow your circumstances around you, what you're seeing in the 3D around you, you're not allowing that to dictate your vibration. And that is a place of power. So let's talk more about that. First and foremost, before you can get to a place where you can control your, your vibration that much, you need to cleanse off spell work. You need to continue cleansing. You're on a cleansing routine that doesn't matter whether or not if you got spell work or not. It is a routine, it is a way of life to cleanse. What do I mean by that? Whether or not, whether or not I feel like anybody sends energy to my space, I always clean my space because it feels good when your space is extremely clean. End of story. It's nothing to do with what is going on around you so that when attacks happen, when you're sent attacks, you're always regularly cleaning anyway. So either way, when you start noticing it, it never gets a chance to hit at all. Now you're energetically sensitive so you can tell when things are happening around you. So this is important. You want to cleanse all kinds of cleanses, energetic cleanses, cleanses on your body, cleanses of heavy, heavy spell work, cleanses of this, cleanses of that. So you're going to continue learning different cleanses and constantly having materials available for you to go throughout your day. It is important. Sending energy back is important as well as alchemizing energy. They both are important, not one or the other. Because, you know, I've heard people speak in such a way where it's like just one or the other. Like, I believe in alchemy. I don't send work back. I believe in sending work back. I think both are important. Knowing what to keep, knowing what to send back. And just leaving that in the hands of your ancestors as well and your spirit guides. Like, you don't have to make that decision always. But some things you can use as fuel to propel you forward. And some things you just do not want this energy at all. You don't want anything to do with it. So, you know, kind of making sure that cleansing energy and spell work is extremely essential to you. Is at the top of your list and is something that you want to do. You want to keep a high vibration. This is not going to be easy to do in the middle of spiritual attacks. And this is why I mention it. It is not going to be easy to keep a high vibration. Not when you're being attacked. It is something that you learn. It is a skill that you're not looking at circumstances. You're not looking at your environment. You're just... looking at what you want looking at what you want to experience choosing what you want to experience um high vibrations are feelings of love feelings of gratitude feelings of connectedness with spirit feelings of peace feelings of joy those are the feelings that you want to feel you do not want to feel hatred animosity strength you know, strength is not something that's bad to feel, but it does require a lot of energy. It's very expensive on energy. So I like to conserve energy. I like to be economical with my energy. So I like vibrations that are easy for me to re re remain at where I feel good. And that is something that takes work and conscious effort. Um, so... In order to get to block your life path, which is what gang stalking is about, in order to block your, your life path, they need access uh, to you by either cursing or projecting into your aura. So I talked about them coming into your dwelling, taking things, putting things on altars, praying against you, that sort of thing. But they need access to your altar, or sorry, access to your aura. And then they project certain things into your aura. So they will project you a lot of rage. Now, you have to learn how to deal with rage early because this is not even your own feelings. They're projecting it. And when they're gang stalking, there's a lot to think about that will enrage a person. So when they send you the rage, it's not like the rage has nothing to attach to. It has something to attach to. 
So this is why rage would be more difficult uh, to deal with in the beginning. So you have to really learn how to deal with it. Now, that was one of the things I had to master and overcome. And you don't, like I said, you don't get to graduate the cycle without learning that lesson. And sometimes they turn the pressure up in order for you to learn it quicker as you get closer and closer to the time that you're supposed to graduate through that. So getting to that place of um, getting over rage takes effort and it takes sometimes catching it and pulling it back and getting rid of it or using it for something else, talking yourself down. And you got to be able to do this at any time because rage will take over you. And if it can't affect you, it's going to affect the people around you. And let me tell you, um, you know, I've seen it where rage is projected to me. It doesn't work on me. I expel it in some way. And then I see the people around me become enraged, screaming and fighting and all that kind of thing. And it just really sabotaging what they're doing. Or if they have the determination to continue what they're doing, it makes it a poor experience. So there is spell work in the air. It's just that I do not accept it because I've dealt with it so long. They also need access to curse you by um, or curse whatever you're doing. So if they can't use rage, they'll use something like lust. And that's when they project you that energy. Now, depends on who you are and how you are. But for me, that sort of thing does not work because it has nothing to attach to. So feeling lusty and lustful and that sort of thing, it's like for me personally, it's not an issue. But if it is for you, then it really will create an opening. It will create an opening for the, the energy that is coming to attach to you through the lust. So at times that things like that happen, you can do things like playing gospel music, playing prayers, playing scriptures, and that speaking those words being spoken into the air and the environment will combat those things. It will push against it for you. It will be the energy that is expended for you to cleanse the air. So you want to refocus yourself, refocus your mind. If, that, if you are a person who suffers with that, you need to starve it of attention. So that's what, you know, one of the things for me that I do, I constantly pray prayers, put on mantras, anything like that, that will realign the energy and take away my focus from something that I, I shouldn't be focusing on at all. So these things need something to attach to. It's just like, um, and that's one of the ways that they're going to send you sort of demons and stuff and energy that possesses you, attaches to you, and really starts controlling your life and your movements from the inside. Uh, very corrosive energy. So it's very important to be in the right vibration. And it's certainly very important to recognize when feelings are being projected and not yours. And accepting the fact in your day-to-day -day life that you have to constantly check your emotions because you are susceptible to being projected upon you are susceptible to being preyed upon so taking your time and really being aware of the energy of the energy that is around you um without the ability to curse you so without these four things above access to cursing you or influencing your your aura being in a high vibration cleansing spell work and having no reaction the gang stalking that is occurring around you just looks like flying monkeys it literally just looks like people trying to access you trying to disturb you it doesn't look like too much else you're able to un avoid them you're able to um, ignore them you're able to not be affected by whatever they're doing you're able to not interact with them you're able to have no reaction to them and then you move around in your day that's it so you are being what is going to be aggressively gang stalked but you're going to be able to navigate with that by just having these four things and i'm going to list these four things so that people can actually see them and, and think about them you want to get to the point where it's just flying monkeys around you and it's not like oh, the gang stalkers and you're having an anxiety attack and you're panicking and all that you just want to be at a point where it's just flying monkeys it's just people around you trying to harass you it's just people around you trying to get a reaction from you it's just people around you trying to disturb you but it's not going to work 
The other thing that you have to do is sit in prayer with God while you are being under spiritual attack, while you're being projected upon. You want to sit in prayer with God. You want to talk to God about everything that's going on. You want to ask for help. You want to ask for, please be with me. You want to talk to God. You want to, you know, be in meditation and contemplation. You want to be thinking things through. This is where you want to be. You want to be strategizing your day. Well, I should do this first and I should do that and I should do it this way. And when things get blocked, then you want to pray and ask God right away, like, please help me with this. How do I make better of this situation? How do I turn this around in my favor? What can I do? So this is a space that you want to be in, in a, a space of strategy, not in a place of using excessive strength on that push-pull feeling that you're having. You want to be in a place of strategy. Um, you're going to feel like when people are projecting you negative energy, you're going to feel like God's on one shoulder or sorry, God's on one shoulder and the devil's on the other. The devil's on the left shoulder. God's on the right. Okay. You're going to feel as if you have God and, and the devil on each shoulder trying to get your attention. God's trying to get your attention, encouraging you, talking to you pushing you, guiding you through, coaching you, doing what a loving parent would do. And the devil's on the other shoulder trying to frustrate you, distract you, create disharmony in your situation, create disharmony with the people around you, create toxicity and bad blood, you know, and just working on two people one at a time, each trying to get them to fight. And just break up the plans that are working on, that are going on. So you have to sit in prayer because the people around you are not sitting in prayer. And then you have to pray over the people around you so that they can be blocked from the things that they are being projected upon. So you 100% have to sit in prayer throughout this situation. And you got to take your time with it and it is okay. It takes practice. It takes a lot of work to operate like this. Um solutions can come from this place a place of sitting in prayer not reacting you know energies not projecting you know rage not being a successful in projecting rage and lust towards you being in a high vibration cleansing off spell work not having reactions from that place you are going to be able to really find solutions that come easy that come behind without pain and without work. Give me a second. That is a place where solutions can come. So, while in situations that are less than perfect, you it the situation itself is going to call for more energy the situation itself is going to call for more patience the situation itself is going to just be expensive on energy because not only are you have to get to a point where your mind is looking for solutions it's not looking to complain about what's going on it's not wasting time on that now hopefully most adults should have gotten to adulthood um, at least experiencing enough adversity that makes you realize where you should put your attention. But I know that's not realistic because different people evolve differently. However, whining, complaining, being frustrated is only going to stand in your way and especially panicking. Panicking is a mistake. So you have to get yourself to a point where you are detached, detached from really having strong reactions to situations you have to put yourself in a situation where your your focus becomes extreme <clears throat> and your focus becomes very specific um one of the first ways is to give up on perfection if you want things to be perfect you're going to fight a lot 
I always talk about just getting things done. Sometimes the means by which we get it done are not ideal. We work on solutions incrementally as we can, but when we don't have solutions, we still have to move, fo move forward. We still have to try. That, th that is the period where you, you're trying to bulldoze through a situation, go through the hard way, which is not having a strategy, not having a plan, but still trying to get it done and figuring like, I'll figure it out as I go. But when you reach a place where you have cleansed out any sort of external influences that might affect you, when you get to a place where you jump every single hurdle thrown at you, now you can really look at, well, if these are all the hurdles, what do I need to do to block those hurdles from me in order to move forward positively? And that is where strategy and planning comes in. If you know that one of the ways people access your energy is through your personal belongings, then you try to secure them. Possibly if you've tried every single lock that you can and that hasn't worked because they found a way, then what you do need to do is you need to go ahead and maybe just always have someone home at all times in order to protect the things that you have. Maybe that's what you need to do. You have to find the way that makes sense for you to protect yourself once you know what you know. And so you're going through this process to learn what to know. You're going through this process in order to see how many different ways can people access you and influence your behavior or influence your life, influence your life experience. So from that place of strategy, from that place of planning, from that place of praying, and accepting that 50% of the work needs to be done in the spirit and that everything happens spiritually and that you must pray. And then when you pray for things, God comes through. That is the way that you walk through and you find your solutions. There are no mistakes on this path. That's something I've had to accept. I've had to be kinder to myself. I've had to be more gentle with myself. There's no mistakes on this path. So everything is just learning. You are learning solutions as you go. You're learning about different things that can happen. For me, my focus has definitely, I've had a big focus on the spiritual side of things because I enjoy knowing that because that to me is more important than the physical side. I can work as hard as I want on the physical side. If there is spell work or bindings in the spirit, nothing is gonna work. I can work as hard as I want on the spiritual side. And once that is done, the physical is done no matter what I want. As it is in heaven, so it is on earth. So the spiritual is most important. That's why we put God first. You're wasting your time doing anything, fighting any type of energy work if you have not undone it spiritually. Whether it's for you to lose weight, whether it's for you, you to lose your beauty, your money, your relationships. If it works in the spirit, then it can work here. If it is rejected in the spirit, it cannot work. And so that is why you need God to untie the situation for you. And moving forward, you recognize just how much you need God. So things start making sense. You learn everything that there is to learn because you want to graduate this with flying colors, meaning that you really pushed yourself to the, the, the limits that you should. Um, and ascending as a human being, maturing, exiting a, a more mature version of who you started as. You will make mistakes. It will not be easy. You will falter. You will find your way. You will be retested and fall back but you will do the best that you can. And sometimes, and I can tell you for me, it's only in regressing and falling back that I've realized the beauty of the way that I have been told. Because God told me, God showed me, it's just difficult to do. And sometimes you gotta walk every step for you to learn. The healing is important, forgiveness is important. That's something God pushes me to do all the time. It gets you know, easier and easier, but it is still difficult with the forgiveness portion of things. But that is how we learn and that is how we grow. And that is how we ascend out of here. That is how you push the limits to higher and higher vibrations is by becoming, developing a pattern of regular forgiveness, developing just like your cleansing routine, developing a pattern of learning a lesson other than taking it as a punishment, Developing a pattern of healing yourself, looking at what you've gone through, self-forgiving, 
you know, climbing over the situation emotionally, learning how to do better next time, putting processes in place until it becomes second nature, changing yourself, uh, shifting out of old vibrations, shifting out of a whole different emotional body. That is what you're trying to do. So there are no mistakes. It is all learning. Um, they gain access through music. You know, spirits communicate through music, through energy. So, you know, you'll start thinking of things or songs will come up or you'll hear things where it's like a vibration, a particular energy is trying to communicate with you. And what is when it is a low energy, a lustful energy, an angry energy, it'll come in that sort of music. That is what is going to be projected your way. And so that's why it's good to play things like, you know, gospel music or prayers or anything of a higher or even uh, songs about love. That is the vibration that you want to attach to and connect in your environment. And, you know, we all have phones that we can put on. Once you have that playing in your environment, once you have um, that high vibration around you, you become... A, um, a vibrational mismatch for the lower energies and that is where you want to come to is a place where you are not a vibrational match to the things that are being projected towards you so that is why it is important to control the music that you listen to the things that you consume when they say the things that you consume are a lot more than just you know the food that you're intaking it is the vibration that you're a part of um, it is, you know, the kind of energy being pushed into your environment. It's all of that. So please do keep that in mind. I wanted to talk also about, um, and let me, let me just repeat those things. I have a lot of like charts or lists that I can put out, but healing is freedom from the situation. Self-forgiveness is freedom from the situation forgiving others is freedom from this situation being sexually responsible and being having some purity of yourself that is freedom from these lower vibrational situations and most importantly constant prayer and connection to god staying close to god prayer literally in my language means close to god so by praying remaining close to god you will always receive the guidance, the protection, um, the messages, the warnings that you need to be free of this situation. So these are five things that I've listed that free you from this situation and they are not easy. However, it works. God has told me I've tried it my way. I've done it God's way. And I'm like, oh my goodness, I wish I had done this sooner. So it works. Um... Back to bad memories. I want to talk about bad memories. They try to create bad memories for you on purpose. And the reason that they're trying to create bad memories on purpose is because they want to change your character and who you are. They want to change what you think of yourself. They want to change how you perceive your life. And they want to, per and they want to change your hope. They want to take hope against you or away from you if I if I will um, when they create bad memories in you bad memories and consistent bad experiences and betrayals by people consistently feeling that nobody cares about you and that people are betraying you those kind of things that happen these are these become it's like you attach your life experience to that because you're always expecting that you have to pull it away. You have to know that there's your normal life experience that, that is good and amazing. And then on top of your normal life experience, there are attacks that you have to insulate yourself from. Having that reality, having that reality puts you in a situation where you can now know what is not naturally yours and what you need to expel and get rid of. 
you can now say to yourself, well, I'm only having this bad experience because I have a handler here. I'm only having this bad experience because I haven't prayed. I'm only having this bad experience because I haven't meditated. I'm only having this bad experience because I'm reacting, because I haven't forgiven, because I'm triggered by a person. That is why I'm having this life experience and it's not my natural life experience. It's very important to recognize that and so to turn a situation that could have been bad into a positive situation. These situations create grudges and wounds. These are deep scars. These are soul wounds as I've described before. And so having soul wounds, it's very difficult to cleanse. It is more difficult to heal from. It's more difficult to find the forgiveness. And so it's a situation that needs to be actively worked on. Believe me. It needs to be actively healed. You need to ha actively heal grudges that you have with people. Actively stand up for yourself, set boundaries so that people don't consistently cross you, that people know better. Tell people stop, tell people no. Do not answer questions about yourself. Be very private. Be very deliberate in the way that you move around in the world. It's gonna take work and you get to do that work and that's okay because that's how you learn and it's not a punishment but as I said before it are it's it's the correct person that comes in to teach you a good lesson about life that comes in to teach you how to navigate life and how to navigate the world and from that place you start learning Ooh, sorry from that place, you start learning how to navigate things, how to get through things, how to take care of yourself, how to not let yourself be wounded in a place where you're not healed. Um, once they can block the forgiveness in your heart and they try to do that by any means necessary, they will literally project onto you. Um, you know feelings that are not there they will try to constantly create animosity try to constantly create um, you know feelings of anger and rage and you got to transcend it slowly but surely you have to heal and you have to forgive and you have to get rid of the wound you do you have to get rid of the wound in order for you to get where you got to go and on time <coughs> excuse me if you are unhealed, you become controllable because it's just easy to project onto you and there's an energy there to assist in that that is right there in your vessel. Being unhealed makes you prime real estate for dirty energy, dirty entities. So you got to heal. You got to get yourself to a point where you are not easily controlled. When you are healed, you are too high vibing to reach. When you're healed, the triggers that would be there to attach to are no longer there. The triggers that are there for dirty energy or low vibing energy to attach to are no longer there. And what are those feelings? You're going to have joy. You're going to have peace. You're going to have hope. You're going to have understanding of a situation. And you're just going to learn like, you know, it is what it is. It's life. This is how life goes. There's nothing we can do. I just have to learn from it. I just have to go grow from it. This is how healed people approach problems. They say, oh, okay, well, that didn't work. Then let me do this. Oh, well, that didn't work. So let me do that. And they go ahead and they figure it out one day at a time. That's all it is. Um, animosity definitely puts you in a rage and assists in rumors about what kind of person you are and you know when you're being gang stalked i mean you don't want rumors to look right but there comes a point where people are going to believe what they're going to believe people who know you're being gang stalked and in my situation people who are being gang stalked themselves people are out and out threatening people to be around me so this is not a situation where um it's not a situation where I'm not going to say your reputation doesn't matter, but I'm going to say it's going to take a hit. So I don't want you to fight that too much. However, you do want to be in a high vibration. You do not want to have gossip be true. You don't want to be a hateful, angry, unloving, unkind person. You want to be a good person, but you also got to have boundaries. You have to have boundaries. They have to be firm 
and they have to elevate according to the energy that you're dealing with. When you're dealing with gang stalkers, these are people who don't understand boundaries. So you have to be sometimes a little bit more aggressive with gang stalkers than you do with normal people. You have to send very clear cut messages that cut deep that are wounds, that create wounds that they can see in their normal day-to-day -day life so that they stop. Because if it doesn't affect them in any way to bother you, they'll bother you because they're being paid to do so. So it is important to weed out a lot of abuse by standing firm and pushing back. Um, you need to control your reactions, All obviously, so you don't want to be in a situation where, um, you know, you're always complaining, you're always a victim, um, you know, you always are the person who is not expecting things to go well. You, you got to leave it alone. A lot of things you got to ignore, you got to keep to yourself and just move past it. Because the way that things are done, it's done in an underhanded way. It's done in an underhanded, gaslighting, triggering way that's not apparent. So you trying to prove it to people is a total waste of time. It just almost seems like you always have some type of issue. And so that's something you have to try to learn from. That is something that you, you can make the mistake once or twice. You see how it goes. You see how it works for you. You see how it affects your life experience and you move forward. You don't be that person. You are not the perpetual victim. It may seem like you're coming from a place where, you know, people always have sympathy for you, but some people that takes too much energy from them and they'll abandon you. Some people just don't like that vibration and so they just won't engage you in it. They, they just don't want to be a part of you or a part of it anymore. So you have to be careful with that these are just things that you have to work on to be honest with you sometimes you you finally get the lesson you hit the mark then sometimes you regress then you have to work to do it again and in doing so eventually you come to the point where you get to where you have to go once you start realizing the things that you have to work on and it becomes very apparent very clear without being told like i don't like feeling this way let me feel a better way um as you go through that process slowly but surely you get to the point where you can have more control over your life because you're controlling your vibration if you can control where you're vibrating and you can control staying at that vibration and by staying in constant communication with god which is the last thing that i'm going to talk about because it's the most important one you can get yourself to the point that whether or not you're being sabotaged, whether or not you're being followed, whether or not you're being monitored, whether or not you, whatever is happening, you can get through it with constant prayer. So, like I said, praying is staying close to God. And so through gang stalking, you want to meet your spirit guides. Hopefully you've met them very early in the process like myself. I did. I accepted. I took the walk. Um getting yourself to that place is what's going to put you is this it is what's going to put you in a position to um navigate your life if you will in a, a seamless way because your life as you know it is probably going to be more difficult from here now it probably was before but it was so covert you didn't see the sabotage however now it's over and you know they're doing it and they want you to know that they're doing it you're gonna have to stay in constant prayer I mean all the time I mean all day I mean round the clock a constant state of prayer and I know that sounds I don't know how that sounds to anyone I enjoy going into the spirit I enjoy talking to spirit I enjoy spending time just with spirit so it's different it's a very fascinating relationship it's a very loving relationship. It's a very, I feel safe in this relationship. I feel spirit around me. And so for me, this is just a better way. And the more you talk to spirit, the more you communicate with spirit, the more you pray to spirit is the more you're going to see spirit. It's the closer spirit becomes. And that is how you get there with constant prayer, constant communication, staying in the right vibration, etc., etc. This is how you bring spirit into your world in strong ways where spirit can really block a lot of things out for you. Um, 
it's kind of like your altar you start realizing that the better you take care of your spirit guides and your ancestors is the better they can take care of you. Not because they don't want to and not because it's tit for tat. It just is the communication with them. The communication link remains open and remains strong as you take care of them with that altar. And then that altar now becomes a real power source from which, you know, very... Uh, very miraculous things can happen on your behalf. They can hear you, you can hear them, you know, they can act on your behalf, you're connected to them. This is what you want your altar to be. It's a place of communication, a place of connection. It's the same way that with prayer and meditation, these are all forms of constantly connecting to spirit. So as you continue to connect with spirit, as you continue to um, talk to spirit, be close to spirit, then you can hear better, you can see better, you can feel better, you can know the solutions, you can know when something's right. So constant communication is important. Good quality communication is essential. Talking to God, expressing your feelings, asking for the help that you want, asking, can you help me out of this situation? Can you make a solution for me? What do you need me to do? How can I get through? Am I doing enough for you? Am I pleasing you? Is there any way that I can improve? Am I doing the things that you like? Constant communication in a constant relationship. This is how you're going to get to where you want to go to where you need to be on time without stagnating your cycle, without getting stuck, without a new beginning. Because that happens to a lot of people is people get stuck without a new beginning. New things start occurring or, or the old cycles just keep repeating itself perpetually. They get stuck. And this is the worst place to be stuck is in gang stalking, is in a gang stalking cycle, is in a nightmare. So to be binded to situations is to continue repeating situations, is to be able to not be able to let things go. You know, and as I tell you, it's because I'm learning it. Some things, it's like I'm learning and then relearning. And I used to wonder, well, why does spirit test us? Is to make sure that we really truly learn the lesson. But I've learned and I've relearned and I've come to a place where you know, now I understand the importance of doing it, and but it is conscious effort always. It is always conscious effort. Um, these are things that after I've learned, I've dropped the ball and picked it up again. It's like exercising, dropping it and picking it up again and trying again and trying again and trying again. So it's not easy. This is our journey. This is our path. We are ascending. We are learning and we are growing into the people that we want to be. Try your best, but do not remain the same person. I also wanted to address one more thing. You cannot be 100% only love and light in this situation. It is not going to work and it is not meant to work. You have to step into a certain part of yourself in order to graduate and ascend. You have to also, you have to accept both parts of yourself, the light and the dark part of yourself. And you have to have them in a balance not in balance. Thank you. Let me pick a spirit messages card actually before I am done. But I do want to say um Okay, so these are the two cards that came out. When a door doesn't open, don't waste your energy trying to make it open. It's closed for a reason. You are being redirected to something far bigger and better. Endings are part of the cycle of life. They make way for wonderful new beginnings and opportunities. I just learned this lesson this week. When one door doesn't open, that's okay. Move to the next door. So that's a really important one. I'm actually gonna take a picture of, of this one. This is about finding solutions. So I, I love this card. Be true to yourself in all ways. Not everyone will get you. They can only understand from their level of perception and that's on them. No matter what people say, don't ever doubt your worth or the beauty you hold within. Stand tall in your power. I think this is something everybody going through this TI experience 
would definitely you know benefit to hair because you are being projected upon constantly people are trying to per change the perception of who you are and you know it is what it is you have to navigate your life and you have to do your absolute best every day so i wouldn't worry too much about uh about what people think at all during this process the card the crystal of the day is i'm gonna say amber the crystal for balance and renewal it has a stabilizing influence and the vibration is earthy and high an ancient crystal of healing and protection amber is a powerful cleanser and regenerator it imbues the energy bodies with vitality and encourages the physical body to rebalance and heal itself it is also a powerful protector against electric sorry electric and magnetic fields or emf uh, so emf smog and negative energies Amber is a natural antibiotic. It promotes tissue revitalization, alleviates joint problems, and absorbs pain. Resonating with the throat chakra, this crystal assists in treating goiters and other throat ailments. A useful grounding stone, amber connects you to the earth and provides stability. In the mind, it encourages self-expression, enhances decision-making, and promotes trust. And in the spirit, it cleanses and seals the aura and chakras. So you definitely have to balance yourself. Reju rejuvenation is never a bad thing. Actually, you need it. Renewal is a good thing. Closing out cycles is essential. These are the things that we have to get through. This is what the gangster, uh, gang stalking journey is about. We have to learn. We have to heal. We have to do our best in all ways. It is not easy. We try our best. Um, you know, it is what it is. And um, in regards to remaining true to yourself, I love these cards anyway um what was i gonna say i totally forgot i got my uh sidetracked into this because i was deciding if i would want to read it or not um but anyway that is my message for today thank you for anyone watching the comment watching sorry my content please drop a like uh it helps the channel grow please comment i love reading you guys's comments i know i don't comment back but i definitely 100 percent read them and take them under advisement and consideration and don't forget to hit the subscribe button. There is a lot of information here on this channel. You can literally search up anything that you want to know about. I call this channel the Gang Stalking Bible because I talk about it from every single perspective that I could think of. Always the spiritual uh, part of it though because that's how you end it. That's how you take control of your life. That's how you make sure that you stay on your feet and that you're guided safely through this process because this is hell, that you're guided safely through hell into your new beginning which should feel like heaven on earth so i want to thank you have a great day and remember that god loves you